Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and with the week we've had, I decided today to go with the least dramatic thing I could possibly think of. What is something like fun, uplifting, and light, but somewhat related to game development, and then I got it, Game Builder. Game Builder is something I've been playing around with a little bit off and on for the last little while, and what it is, is a game for creating games. It's a great way to introduce like your niece or nephew or son or daughter or whomever, some children in your life, to the world of game development through the act of actually playing and creating a game. But there's a surprising amount of power packed away underneath this guy, and perhaps most impressively, it is completely free. And the intention is, right now it's early access on Steam, but the developers insist that they intend to keep it free forever. So uh, let's jump take, straight in, take a look at Game Builder, and yeah. So first off, we're going to show you the basics of working in Game Builder. This is a very, very simple application. It's got a nice, big, chunky user interface. So if the person using it is a little bit younger, or if you're broadcasting it to like a large screen TV, the interface is very much usable. Um, you've also got full Steam Workshop integration. Now, I don't know that this one is one that you're going to be using to create games. I don't think there's a publish option other than to send your games out to Steam Workshop to share with other people. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to go ahead and start. Um, here you've got your option. You can either create a game or pull something in from the workshop. I'm going to do create a new game and play. And then you've got a choice between single, private multiplayer, and uh, public multiplayer. I'm going to go with single for two reasons. First off, multiplayer is new and buggy, and second is I have no friends. So we'll go with single player here, load it up, and here you are in the game world. They've got some instructions there. Who needs instructions? Basically, you're this giant little ro or this giant little robot. Okay, that makes sense. This little robot that runs around in the game world, and you populate it. And that's kind of how the things work. So here we are in our level, and I'm gonna hit space. Uh, so hit, hit the tab key, and we're in um, you know object creation mode. I guess you could say you can toggle. If you'll notice up here at the top left corner, you're using F7, you can toggle between playing and pausing. You can also reset the state of your world. That's you know it, it will just go back to the constructed form. None of the behaviors will have applied. But now what we can do is go ahead and you see across the bottom hand corner, there is your interface tab. So we got number one for create, two for move, three for rotate, four for scale, five for inspect, six for construct, and so on. And what we're going to start with is simple creation. I'm going to show you how to instance objects inside of the scene. So now you see there's a default at the top of F1, F2, F3, F4 for placing those things. So for example, if I hit F4, I can now place a tree in the world. And it will continue doing that until I select otherwise. You'll also notice the Q and E can be used for scrolling between options left and right. So always there is an on-screen indicator of what various different commands do. Now the important key there though is F to open up the library. So I'm going to open up the library and here you see there's an asset pack. It's weird. They say there's a winter asset pack too, but I don't actually know where it is. And there's also some built-in programmed objects. So for example, if we want a lion or another robot running around the scene, you can just literally select it. It will load up the object and then you can place it in the world. You'll notice there is a default behavior attached to this particular lion. Um, now, there's obviously not bone-based animations going on, so it's primitive, uh, but you see it has behaviors already attached to it. We can look at that in a second. It's basically came after us to attack us. Now, the cool thing is here, they fully integrated with Google, Google Poly. So if you want to bring in an object, you can come up here and just basically search for it. So there I just search for jet, let it run. It's going to go through Google Poly and find all of the various different jets that are available. Let's see, we got an X-Wing here. And we're going to place it in the world. Now, there's a very important lesson here. Just because something is in Google Poly and it's freely available for your use, it doesn't mean it's not in Himber by copyright like what you just saw with this guy. So now we can switch between the different modes. So here we're now in uh, move mode. So we can grab the guy. And once again, oops, there is always an on-screen indicator. Here, let's chase that guy down. There's an on-screen indicator of what various different commands do. So let's bring him back. Bring it on back, bring it on back. There we go. Let's grab it again, bring it a little bit closer. All right. So there you see, you can move it, or I can use right mouse button, and we can move him up and down in the world. Same thing, rotation, left and mouse button, do various different things, pitch and roll or, or uh, rotate. Scale, same deal, left makes it bigger. Hold down shift while doing that, makes it bigger at a much faster rate. And that is essentially how you populate objects in your world. You can also go into six, which is construct. And here's where you're going to get into like a Minecraft building type thing. So you see here, we've got standard blocks and they're in the texture as shown on the right hand side. So the Z and X key, I can tackle between, you know, solid colors or different textures and so on like that. Or I could use the Q and E key to toggle between the different raw primitive types. And you can stack them, you can build them on top of each other, 
just kind of like working with Minecraft. And then of course we have uh, like F2 where we can do half walls, which again can be rotated. We've got ramps, corners, and we saw walls, and of course your ubiquitous blocks. So there's how you can do your, your um, Minecraft type world building with these tools. And where the real magic probably comes in is when you get into inspection. So when we go to inspection and I pick an object, for example, our Xbox, or our Xbox, our X-Wing here, you see we can apply behaviors to it. And this is where you can get, if you're a dedicated game developer, you can actually create your own JavaScript. But this is a programming interface that is, it, you can grasp this as a child, uh, pretty much no problem. So come in here, for example, you can say, look at, and then I got to pick who to look at. And then I pick the object in the scene that I want to look at. So now that guy is going to look at, come on. Here, let's look at this tree. So now it's going to look at the tree and then we can say, okay, let's go ahead. So we can turn yaw only off so it'll look that way. Uh, you see, we'd have to do some rotation to get what the front is calibrated correctly. But that is how you go ahead and add behavior in here. We can add multiple behaviors. So we can come back here, look at library. We can do a move forward and then we can set the speed we want to move forward at. Now with that look at behavior, we're getting some weird behavior there. So what I could do is I could come back here to look at behavior. I could delete it. Yep. I can do a reset so our guy is back up in space and I can play, move forward. Let's give it some speed, hit play. And there you see, like I said earlier on, you would probably want to rotate it so that forward actually makes a little bit of sense. But this is how you would go ahead and add logic or behavior to your actual world. So you can go ahead, you can create your own behavior completely from scratch. Um, and then what you can do is you can come over here, even with the built-in behavior. So all of these various different things like this physics, trampoline, um, we got spawners, uh, we have um, damage giving, ability giving, player controls we could apply to it. So we could have various different settings for how fast to sprint or jump and so on. Um, so if I wanted to make that X-Wing player controllable, I could just attach a player controls um, behavior to it, for example. But the other thing I can do is hit here and go edit JavaScript. And this is where Game Builder kind of became quite cool to me. If they actually give you the ability to build an EXE, I could see using this for Game Jam, to be honest. And you'll see here, it is straight up JavaScript code. So we could, this is the actual um, controller for speed, sprint, and jumping. And then you can see the code that is handled behind it. And it's, it literally is straight JavaScript. It uses the 3JS library for some of it. But if you want to have some detail, oh, and the cool thing here is in this little editor, we've also got full text completion, which is it's quite sweet. Uh, they've obviously embedded some kind of an editor in here. But if you're interested in learning more about the scripting interface, you head on over here. It brings you to a Google Doc for their documentation for getting started. Uh, here we go. And so they got a bit of a walkthrough of how you actually go ahead and program your game builder game. And then this guy is another useful document that opens up elsewhere. So you can come in here and get their, their game builder specific API. I believe this opens in another document as well. Yeah, it does. And here you've got basically your class reference for the major built-in types. And they're, uh, they're pretty simple. Uh, they've got things here for sending messages, for uh, being alive, for um, and and basically you've just got the current like your actor that you're controlling. So like the player, uh, you've got any or other actors in the scene, and then you have a handler API, and that's kind of all you need to work with. But it's fully documented. Uh, everything you need to know to learn more is here. And then the cool thing, let's head on back over here. I uh, close out of that behavior or script we were creating. Um, we can also hit escape and we can go in here too. So we've got, okay, so show, I'll show you options. No, it's not options I want. It's, oh, it's options down here. So zero. And you'll see here, we've also got a couple of things we can use to control our actual game. So we've got rules for the game world. You saw there, we can edit with the behavior. We've got options for controlling our, our uh, camera. So we can move it to an isometric perspective. Uh, we can move it to a first person perspective. So let's go back to isometric and we can control the zoom level on said camera. We can also control 90 degree rotation values. So here we are isometric, but following our person. Um, then you get some visual effects options they have here. So if I wanted to switch this to a black and white render, you can, and you can stack these. So uh, by the way, their view of what, how bad VHS was, is a little bit off, but we can do here a black and white drawing and you can get some really cool visual effects going on your particular scene. Turn black and white back off. Um, so those are some of the options you've got here. You've also got fake black and white film values. You've got pixelation options up here. And then we've got some settings for the world, such as the world box. So we can change the sky box of our world. Uh, you can change the ground of our world. 
And yeah, and then finally, I'm gonna go ahead back over here. This is when you hit the escape key. Obviously you can name your scene, um, save it out. But what I'm gonna show you now, uh, I don't think game library is anything exciting. Yeah, it's just back to this launch screen. But Steam Workshop is where people can go ahead and share their efforts. And there's some really cool stuff in here that shows you how, how to actually work with it. So for example, this is one I looked at earlier and we're gonna go ahead and play it and we're gonna play it in single player. And this one literally just shows you how you could go ahead and create an elevator in, in this game world. So we're gonna come in here and you'll see we've noticed we've got a um, call button which will summon up the elevator. So then we can pick and I just ran into either four or five. So now we're going up to the fourth or fifth floor, I guess four. So if I came back here, I could hit five and we're gonna go up to the next floor, and then I'm gonna do a kamikaze. Yeah, boom. And then we can come back here and call our elevator back down. So there are all kinds of levels built in that give that show you how to uh, do this kind of stuff. And then the cool thing is, I can hit tab. I don't know why I just flew up in the world, but I can hit tab, and then we can go ahead and say do an inspect that call button, and then I can see here is the behavior controlling that call button. And if I go ahead and click here, you will see that is the underlying JavaScript that controlled that particular thing. And we can get that again and again. Everything in this world uh, we can interact with. So I, I think the elevator has behaviors attached to it. Elevator floor. So you see there's some properties set for it. And we can drill down and see the actual code that is controlling that elevator. So again, this is super simple. It's fun stuff. You know, you're not going to create your next great game in it. You could maybe prototype in it, I guess. Uh, but it's all about, you know, learning to program in a kind of fun environment. And truth be told, I, I just kind of found myself playing around with it, especially with the poly integration. I was making uh, little cities and adding behavior to the cities and having things roam around the cities kind of just intuitively. And it was actually kind of amusing. And then the, the one step further again is since you've got that full JavaScript integration, if, if you say had a small child you wanted to introduce to this, well, you could create behaviors for them and then have, um, you know, they can make more and more complex world. And it's a good way of introducing someone slowly to the world of game programming because there is a full fat programming language. There's this JavaScript functionality in there. So that is, like I said, Game Builder. It's very, very simple and straightforward. It's also very, very free, which is extremely cool. I will link this down below. This is the Steam, pa Steam Builder page for it. Uh, it's created by Area 120. Uh, the reviews are pretty positive on this guy so far. Um, you can read a little bit more about what functionality they're adding. So here's what they've got right now. Kind of shows you what, what we kind of just show, um, currently showcased. And then some of the stuff they're looking at adding. And this first one is actually really interesting and, and maybe slightly erratic. Uh, no, no, new, new EULA terms of service make this just fine. There is going to be a Unity importer or exporter. So you actually can publish your games out to Unity and and then you could use this as a tool for rapidly creating prototypes or for um, game jams and similar. Uh, so that's kind of going to be really cool. They're looking at adding YouTube textures. I don't know why. Sound effects, particle effects, uh, pathfinding NPCs, more pre-made behaviors and objects, sharing behaviors and pre-made objects on Steam workflow. So that is another thing. That is another thing I think they really need. Is So right now you can only publish your full level. So if I wanted to have an elevator behavior, I have to download that person's elevator, pull their code out. Now it would be cool if they could just create an elevator object that had behaviors and scripting that goes with it that I could just import into my world or if I wanted to have a torch behavior, for example. Well, that is coming in the future and that will make a huge difference. Um, so that's the sharing of behaviors. Uh, more example games, programmable camera effects and 2D uh, UI creation. Right now, the UI is pretty simple because all we can do is we can drop text into the world like so and place them like any other 3D object. In fact, you can even come in and go here and like scale and we can scale that that message up and make it as big as you want. You can even program it and add behaviors to it so that you can have this particular guy following around your character or following around an object in the scene. But that is kind of the extent of what they've got for UIs right now. So obviously that is an area where it would the improvement would definitely be nice to see. But they're very cool right down here is, will your game be priced differently during and after early access? Game Builder will remain free to the foreseeable future. That doesn't mean forever, but this is intended as a free thing. So now one thing I did run into is they say they've got this winter pack with more sprites and objects and so on and so forth. I don't know how to install it. I might just be dumb. It doesn't seem like there's any DLC options. And when I'm in here and I go to create mode, 
like hit one here and I'm in create mode and open up my library, I don't know how to get to the winter asset pack. Uh, so that's there, but I, I actually don't know how to go ahead and use it. But I gotta say, the Google Poly integration is quite sweet. Um, Google Poly, if you don't know, is a gigantic resource by Google of uh, assets to use in your games or VR creations. So it's cool to see that they integrated that in there. And you will mostly find what you need. So if you need a tree, they will have multiple trees. If you need a building, they will have multiple buildings. Poly is uh, pretty sweet on that regard. Here, let me just open it up, see what we find. So if I came in here and I'm looking for a camel, Will I find a camel? Yes, I find multiple camels. Uh, will I find um, a tower? Yes, I find multiple towers. And then if you want a tower, you click the tower, well, technically a pagoda, and there it is in your world. Now, everything comes in at the same size, by the way, so you're going to be doing a lot of this. But as you can see, you can really quickly create your game worlds, and it's so simple. It's, it's game level that this is something that... Um, if your kid can read, uh, they can do this. And even if you, I, I guarantee you, if you find yourself playing with this, you're going to play with it for at least an hour. It, it's just fun. Um, so, like I said, I, I figured I would do something complete and utterly drama-free today, and Game Builder is about that thing. It's not particularly useful for a dedicated game developer, but for someone that wants to try and teach kids, or uh, just wants to have a little bit of fun, or once that Unity export is in there, wants to prototype or game jam, it will be a legitimately useful tool. And it is, it's remarkable how good it is right now. It is very stable, it performs quite well, um, it is quite polished, and once they start adding those other features they talk about, like sharing of behaviors, it, it will be really kind of cool. Uh, so that is it. That is Game Builder, an early access game building game on Steam that is, in theory, going to be free forever. I know it's a little bit off the typical kind of game engines I cover on this channel, but I like to cover just about every facet of game development, from the AAA engines down to uh, games about game engines, I suppose. So hopefully at least two of you found this fun and interesting, and maybe, you know, this will introduce one more child to the world of programming, and that's always a win. Unless, of course, that person was going to go on to cure cancer otherwise, in which case, I, I guess it's, it depends on how good their games are, because, you know, we need better games. Okay, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.